So you have a weekend off and you decide to go to Houston, Texas. You wonder, what is there to do in this great city? This is Earth Explorer VR. Stay tuned for a VR tour and learn what Houston has to offer for a weekend getaway. Nicknamed the Bayou City, Space City, H-Town, and the 713, Houston has become a global city with strengths in culture, medicine, and research. The city has a population from various ethnic and religious backgrounds and a large and growing international community. Houston is the most diverse metropolitan area in Texas and has been described as the most racially and ethnically diverse major metropolis in the U.S. The city of Houston was founded by land investors on August 30th, 1836 at the confluence of Buffalo Bayou and White Oak Bayou and incorporated as a city on June the 5th, 1837. The city is named after former General Sam Houston, who was President of the Republic of Texas and had won Texas's independence from Mexico at the Battle of San Jacinto, 25 miles east of Allen's Landing. After briefly serving as the capital of Texas Republic in the late 1830s, Houston grew steadily into a regional trading center for the remainder of the 19th century. The arrival of the 20th century brought a convergence of economic factors that fueled rapid growth in Houston, including a burgeoning port and railroad industry, the decline of Galveston as Texas's primary port following a devastating 1900 hurricane, the subsequent construction of the Houston Ship Channel, and the Texas oil boom. In the mid-20th century, Houston's economy diversified as it became home to the Texas Medical Center, the world's largest concentration of healthcare and research institutions, and NASA's Johnson Space Center, home to the Mission Control Center. Since the late 19th century, Houston's economy has had a broad industrial base in energy, manufacturing, aeronautics, and transportation. Leading in healthcare sectors and building oil field equipment, Houston has the second most Fortune 500 headquarters of any U.S. municipality within its city limits, after New York City. Houston is the most populous city in Texas, fourth most populous city in the United States, most populous city in the southern United States, as well as the sixth most populous in North America, with a population of 2,304,000. 580 in 2020. It is the largest city in the United States by total area whose government is not consolidated with a county, parish, or borough. Now that we've gone over some background information of Houston, let's start taking a look at the attractions, starting with the Johnson Space Center. The Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center is NASA's Center for Human Spaceflight originally named the Manned Spacecraft Center, where human spaceflight training, research, and flight control are conducted. It was built and leased to NASA by Joseph L. Smith & Associates, Incorporated. It was renamed in honor of the late U.S. President and Texas native, Lyndon B. Johnson, by an act of the United States Senate on February 19, 1973. It consists of a complex of 100 buildings constructed on 1,620 acres in the Clear Lake area of Houston, which acquired the official nickname Space City in 1967. 
The center is home to NASA's Astronaut Corps and is responsible for training astronauts from both the U.S. and its international partners. It houses the Christopher C. Kraft Jr. Mission Control Center, which has provided the flight control function for every NASA human spaceflight since Gemini 4, including Apollo, Skylab, Apollo Soyuz, and Space Shuttle. It is popularly known by its radio call signs, Mission Control, and Houston. The center features more than 400 space artifacts, permanent and traveling exhibits, and theaters related to the exciting future and remarkable past of America's human spaceflight program, all for one admission price. The experience is designed to engage adults and children alike. Additionally, Space Center Houston has the world's largest collection of moon rocks and lunar samples for public view. The Museum District is one of Houston's greatest cultural attractions, with 19 museums residing in the beautiful area of downtown. Eleven of these are free to the public. Highlights include the Museum of Fine Arts, the Houston Museum of Natural Science, the Children's Museum of Houston, the Menno Collection, the Holocaust Museum, and the Contemporary Arts Museum of Houston, to name just a few. Also in this area is the lovely Herman Park with the Houston Zoo and the Miller Outdoor Theater. Most of the museums are within easy walking distance of each other, although the Menel and the Rothko Chapel are a little farther out. Museums that are free of charge include the Menel Collection, Rothko Chapel, Contemporary Arts Museum Houston, Houston Center for Contemporary Craft, Lawndale Art Center, Houston Museum of African American Culture, Mutis Center for the Arts, and the Houston Center for Photography. Buffalo Bayou Park is a beautiful 160-acre green space running through the city, with the slow-moving waters of Buffalo Bayou as its centerpiece. This urban park is home to extensive walking and biking trails, a dog park, sculptures, and plenty of shady areas to relax. If you are looking for fun things to do in Houston, especially if you want to get outdoors, rent a kayak, canoe, or stand up paddleboard and enjoy a paddle along the bayou. Rentals are available at the park and various tours are offered ranging from one to three hours in length. Similarly, guided cycling tours are also available from outfitters in the city. A particularly unique site in Buffalo Bayou Park is the Cistern, an old underground drinking water reservoir from 1926, which now hosts changing art installations. Today, visitors can go on a short guided tour. The park is also home to a huge colony of Mexican free-tailed bats that inhabit the Wa Drive Bridge. Approximately 250,000 of them fly out from the bridge each evening at sunset. Set on 55 acres in Herman Park, the Houston Zoo is one of the city's star attractions, popular with locals and visitors. The zoo is home to more than 6,000 exotic and indigenous animals and contains an education center and children's zoo. Some of the highlights include feeding the giraffes, seeing marine life up close in the aquarium, and watching sea lions and otters frolicking about. Houston's biggest annual event, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, is a fun-filled 19-day event that brings the whole city out to celebrate in February or March. If you are going to be here during this time, you are in luck, and if you are wondering when to visit Houston, this might be the time to plan your trip. This is an activity the whole family can enjoy, and it's so much more than just a rodeo and livestock show. If this is your first time to an event of this kind, you'll be pleasantly surprised by the diversity of things to do. On the grounds are carnival rides, games, and food stands, and enough entertainment to keep you busy indefinitely. At the rodeo events, which you will need tickets to attend, see the cowboys showing off their skills in a variety of areas. In the evening, some of the biggest names in music perform on stage. Check out the concert listing in advance and secure tickets. If you only have one day to attend this fantastic show, spend a morning or afternoon wandering the grounds and enjoying the carnival. See some of the finest farm animals on display at the livestock show. Then take in a rodeo event or two to see the cowboys in action and spend the evening at a concert. Another not to be missed event is the Downtown Rodeo Parade. 
The beautiful beaches of Galveston are less than an hour away from Houston. If you are looking for a quick break from the city, head out to Galveston for a little time soaking up the sun, wandering through the historic downtown, and dining at a seaside restaurant. Miles of endless beach and shallow turquoise water stretch along the ocean front. At the heart of the beach action is Pleasure Pier. Other attractions to visit include the Ocean Star Offshore Drilling Rig and Museum, the Texas Seaport Museum, and the Strand Historic District. If you are traveling with the family, head to Moody Gardens. If you don't have your own car or want to keep things simple, you can also take an organized tour to the island. One option that combines some sightseeing in Houston is the Houston Sightseeing Tour and Galveston Day Trip. This includes a 90-minute double-decker bus tour of Houston and transportation to and from Galveston, where you'll have free time to explore on your own. When it comes to seeing a game in Houston, sports fans have plenty of options, and whether it's football, baseball, basketball, or soccer, the city takes its sports seriously. Houston is home to the Houston Texans of the NFL, the Houston Astros of Major League Baseball, and the Houston Rockets of the NBA. The Texans play at the Energy Stadium, the Toyota Center in downtown Houston is home to the Rockets, and the Astros play at Minute Maid Park, also in the city center. For soccer fans, there is the Houston Dynamo Football Club, who play at the PNC Stadium in East Downtown Houston. One thing I'd like to recommend that is not on many people's radar is an interactive museum called Seismic. It's the art experience of tomorrow. It's also a mind-bending, interactive experience filled with immersive exhibits and stunning displays designed to both entertain and inspire. Visitors will explore over 40,000 square feet of the most creative, inventive, and enjoyable art ever collected in one location. Chefs in Houston have put this city on the culinary map of America, and dining here is an attraction in and of itself. Possibilities are almost endless, ranging from traditional southern dishes to Latin American, Asian, Mexican, and countless other cultural specialties. The number of wonderful dining options is too extensive to list, but my personal favorite is a Vietnamese pho restaurant called Pho Dien. It is the best pho restaurant I have ever tried anywhere in the USA, and I have tried many pho restaurants throughout the country. We have just gone over some of the attractions that the city of Houston and the surrounding area has to offer. Keep in mind that this is not everything that Houston has to offer. Many other people will offer other suggestions, but this is a list of things that I would recommend for you to do if you have just a weekend to spend in the Houston area. Let's go ahead and start our VR tour. Are you ready? All right. Well, this is the Houston, Texas area. As you can see, it's a much larger area than San Antonio, Texas. We went over San Antonio, Texas in the previous video. Um, so if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check that video out. So Houston, Texas, I went over some basic information in the beginning of this video. So you should be familiar with some of the things about Houston. Of course, there's a lot more to know. Uh, there's a lot more to read about, but I give just a general overview of what Houston has to offer. So here is Houston in this area. Galveston is down in this area. And then you can see the Gulf of Mexico um, right next to Galveston right there. So um, this is Houston. Let's zoom in, okay? So things are becoming more clear. And we're approaching the downtown area of Houston, Texas. So let's go ahead and tilt the earth down. So this is the downtown area. Um, you can see that it's pretty big. It has a lot of skyscrapers and uh, things like that. And we can look around in our general vicinity and we can see that there are even more buildings uh, in this direction. And when we look in this direction, we can also see that Houston expands for a very long distance. If we were to go take this direction, we'd end up all the way in Galveston as we went over earlier. So we're in downtown. 
But the first place I want to start off on is、um, NASA, the Johnson Space Center. So we're going to go ahead and search for the Johnson Space Center. Here we are. So, Johnson Space Center. Great. So, all of this area that you can see here, all around here, this is all part of Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Now, as a visitor, when you come in, typically you come in here on this road, right here. And then this, this McDonald's is so iconic to me because I always see that astronaut on top of McDonald's. So typically, people come down this road. And then we can see right here, there's a sign that says Space Center, Space Center Houston. So this is, we're gonna turn here on this road, take a left. And you can see the Johnson Space Center is right there, right in front of me. So, this is the area of Johnson Space Center, Space Center Houston. We can go ahead and、uh, venture a little bit closer. Of course, we're going to see a lot more than this. This is just a little brief introduction. So, you go through these booths. And it looks like we cannot cross over these booths at the moment, but we'll do it manually. So, when you cross over, you end up seeing a shuttle, a big airplane, a big Boeing airplane, and then you start seeing more of the visitors' area itself. And in here, there are many types of, types of exhibits for adults, for children.、Uh, you can even have lunch with an astronaut. You can do so many different things、uh, in this building. And then, when you get over here to my right, this is when you get to see. Everything the command, the mission control center, and training facilities, and all of that. This is where the big things happen in this side of NASA. This is more like of the visitor part where you get to learn a little bit about、um, the, the space center, you get to learn about、uh, everything related to, to space.、Um, so, if we take a look at this crystal ball here. You can see that I'm right next to this airplane. And when you come and visit this in person, it is quite massive. I mean, just for comparison, look at this man right here. I mean, this is a huge airplane, very massive airplane. And on top of that is a shuttle. So this is really, really big. And so is the parking lot. <laughs> a lot of people come here. So. Let's go ahead and、uh, see if we can take a glimpse of what it's like inside the Space Center. All right, so this is kind of a glimpse of,、uh, of what it looks like inside at certain times.、Um, So,、uh, here at Johnson、uh, Space Center, it seems like every time that I go, they change it a little bit. So, these are like temporary exhibits that are in the center of the main entrance or, or the main、uh, interior area. So,、um, right now, instead of having this big shuttle that says Adventure on it, there's like a,、uh, a Mars exhibit where you can actually touch a Mars rock.、Uh, some of these stay pretty much the same. Um, like this area, this International Space Station is the same. You get to experience a lot of things related to the International Space Station, see astronaut suits,、um, different things like that. So it is a very、uh, unique experience. Children can do interactive things, stimulate their minds. It's overall a very wonderful experience to, to go to, to、uh, NASA at any time, regardless of what exhibits are there. So let's see what else we can find in this area. So, as you can see, this, this exhibit looks a little bit more,、um, more to the, the liking of what I had seen recently with more of the NASA,、uh, the Mars, excuse me,、uh, type of、uh, information and material.、Um, although,、um, like I said, this, this is different than what you just saw in the previous image. So, you can tell that these are temporary exhibits.
This image is a little bit blurry, but uh, you can see they have uh, people coming in for a, I think there's like a science lab, some type of science lab. There's a, 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 a laboratory scientist performing experiments and um, the children are fascinated by that. So let's see if we can find a new image of this area because there is more. Here we go. So here you can see like, um, kind of like a model um, or re reenactment, I guess you can call it, of, of when the astronauts landed on the moon and how they're collecting uh, lunar uh, samples. Um, and so this is a great place to take pictures. Many people take pictures here in this area. This is also the area where you can touch a moon rock as well. So it's a very good area to visit. I think everybody wants to touch a moon rock. I don't think there's, there's probably not one person that doesn't want to touch a moon rock. I mean, I've touched it many times. I've been to NASA many times. I've touched it like, I don't know how many times, but um, it's always neat every time. So I'm looking for a new area, something that we haven't seen. Well, this is the kind of like the cafeteria area. Um, like a, you know, a place you can rest, relax, buy food, coffee, things, um, you know, to just kind of get nourishment. Um, cause you can be at NASA for a long time, especially waiting for a, a tram that, that will take you to, um, the command center, mission control center. Um, it's definitely uh, a place that many people come to and congregate. And of course there's restrooms. People need to go to the restroom. So, uh, let's see. And this place gets very packed. Just keep that in mind. It can on the weekends, especially during the week, not so much. But the weekends, yeah, that's that's where it really gets packed. So this area is pretty cool. Um, this man, when you come and see him in person, I mean, he's not a real person, but he's like a wax figure. He's spinning, uh, um, like you know, in a in a circle, and so it kind of shows like how there is really no gravity, and he's just kind of floating in space, but. Uh, this is a really cool area to, and it kind of smells like a library. Like when I came in here, I remember it was like, this smells like a library. Um, you know, the book smell, or I don't know how to describe it other than book smell, but yeah, this area is really cool. I really like it. And then they have like things you can see, like gloves the astronauts used, uh, stuff they took with them into space, um, all that great stuff. I think this is the same image that we saw. So this is the line of people getting on the tram. You can see how long it is. It stretches pretty far. Now what they have done is they give out cards. You sign up for different um, types of tours and they give you cards like a red card, a blue card. And I think there's a white card and that determines what tour you're taking and you sign up to go at a certain time. So it's a lot more efficient than what it used to be in the past. Um, but it's still, you know, if people want to see NASA. People want to get on those tours. They fill up fast. So if you plan on getting a tour, make sure you sign up very early in the morning. Uh, for the tour because they fill up very quickly, especially the ones that go to the Mission Control Center. And out here, the line is just continuing. You wait outside until the tram comes and picks you up, and then it takes you to the um, area where the, the command, the Mission Control Center is. You can see like a big rocket. Um, it's really nice. Speaking of that, so the tour, the tram, is right here. It'll take you in this way, curve around, and eventually you'll get up to where it says the Saturn V. There's a huge rocket inside of there. So you get to see the rocket, and that's great. Over here they have like cattle. I think there's some kind of like um, agreement with um, some kind of agriculture, some university students come here for, I think for agriculture, something like that. Um, if you do the tour, they'll they'll explain that uh, in detail. 
And so it's quite interesting. So just keep that in mind. There, there are some cattle in this area um, that you can see. Um, if you want to see a Texas Longhorn, you can see a Texas Longhorn right here. And I think many people uh, really want to see a Longhorn. So um, this is the rocket. I mean, you really maybe cannot get a true understanding of how big this thing is, but maybe you can. I mean, if you see these people right here, and then you try to put it into comparison with the length of this rocket. I mean, this is as big as a football field. So this is huge. Um, and you can take many pictures. Um, it, it, this is just like a um, magnificent um, mechanical engineering, um, engineering feat in general. And then they got, you know, these smaller uh, rockets outside that you can see as well. So the tram, if you if you take um, one of the, the um, one of the, I think it might have might have been the, the red, I'm uh, not the red, maybe the blue or the white tour, they'll take you to more areas. I think if you just do the red, they only take you to see that rocket right there, and then they take you back. But other tours will take you further and you get to see a lot of this area. They, they explain what each of these buildings are um, and you get to go in, inside uh, two of them. Um, one of them is, of course, the Christopher C. Kraft Jr. Mission Control Center. This is where everything happens. And it's really amazing to come and to see this place. Um, let's take a look here. So as you can see here, um, there's people, representatives uh, from NASA that are here um, taking photos. And you can see this is the um, Mission Control Center area. It says right up there, Mission Control. There are people working. This is probably happening sometime during the week. I've come on the weekends to, um, to NASA and I've noticed that there's really nobody working. So um, to, to come during the week and to see them in action, it might be a good time to really come during the week. But I know that this is more of a weekend tour that I'm giving. Um, if you ever have a chance to come during the week, that's something that would be very interesting. But yeah, this is a, a mission control area. It looks like this guy is giving out a, a tour or explaining something. And this is the guy that gave us this lovely photo. And here we have another photo. I believe this may be like an older mission control center room. Um, so you get to see um, pretty much um, two, two rooms in the building, I believe. I remember seeing this room one time and seeing the other. So um, unless the tour has changed, um, you get to see the old and the new. So there are really interesting areas here uh, at NASA. Um, one of them also is this huge, huge area. Um, you can see people working. They're building things. They build the stuff that NASA uses when they go into space. So you can imagine the importance of this very room. And it is very big. I've been here a few times and um, it is just amazing to see many people uh, working together from different nations um, and um, yeah it's just um, a great place you should come into this room um, it's you, you get to see a lot of great stuff and you can see there's a tour right here it's kind of blurred out but there are tours that come into this room um, and you get to really enjoy a neat thing uh, by seeing this giant room of NASA workers and their, their products. So overall, those are the main sites that you can see here at NASA. You do get to ride around a little bit. They give you, they explain that there's like an underground tunnel system here because they're during the times of maybe the 50s or the 60s when there were fears of nuclear war, they had built a tunnel system to kind of protect themselves essentially. And so that's something that they did to um, 
avoid any potential injuries or destruction in NASA. All right, so another place I want to show you is the museum district. And the museum district is a very big area. So museum district, Houston, Texas. So the museum district is actually really close to the Texas Medical Center. It's also next to the zoo, as you can see right here. And um, it's in the area of Herman Park, which is a very big, beautiful park in Houston, Texas. And also Rice University, which is this area right here, is in the area. Very good school, private school. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's considered to essentially be an Ivy League school. Okay, so let's zoom in. So we're going to the museum district. You can already see that there is one museum pointed out, which is the Museum of Fine Arts. There's also the Children's Museum in Houston, which I believe is one of the largest children's museums in the USA. So definitely, if you have children, go to the Children's Museum of Houston. It is um, um, one of the biggest and um, one of the greatest um, museums uh, for, for children. So um, definitely take a visit. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and tilt the earth down? Let's get a better view and an appreciation of what all, all, what, what all these buildings are. So downtown is over there. We already saw that. We already saw NASA. We went in that direction over there towards Galveston, which is also the direction towards NASA. And now we are looking at the museum district, which is all of this area here. We're looking at Herman Park. And we're also looking at the Texas Medical Center, which is the largest medical center in the world. So all that you can see right here, all of these buildings, these concentration of buildings and labs, research labs, this is the Texas Medical Center area. And the zoo is right here. So if you have children or you love animals, go ahead and visit the Houston Zoo. Excellent zoo. All right, so there are some museums here. Like the, uh, right here in this dome area, there's like a butterfly type of garden. You can see butterflies flying around in a natural type of habitat. Um, this is the Museum of Natural Science. You can see dinosaur bones. I think that's awesome because it's the only museum I've been to where I get to see like dino dinosaur bones. That's great. Um, there's also the Museum of Fine Art over here. And uh, the Museum of Fine Art is, a beautiful museum. I think it's, um, if you like fine art, you know, then that's your, and that's your thing, definitely go for it. But um, personally, I, I prefer the, the Museum of Natural Science. So that's my thing. But they're all beautiful. I've been to the fine art. I've been to the Museum of Natural Science. Um, every museum that you come here, and you can see they're all walking distance too. They're all walking distance. So this is just wonderful. They're walking distance to the park. Miller Outdoor Theater. Sometimes they have concerts and you can do, see a live outdoor concert. The zoo is in this area. Um, so all of this, here's the zoo. There's a train that takes you around these areas. There's trails, people run around um, for exercise around. This is beautiful. This is a really beautiful area. I mean, as an example right here, I mean, there are trails that you could run around for very long distances, um, plenty of shade from the trees, beautiful trees, tall trees, and just places to have a picnic um, and enjoy. And here's the Miller Outdoor Theater. It's quite a climb for some people, but you know, when you're up there, it's it, it feels great. So let's go ahead and kind of go to this area right here. There's like an obelisk right there. Pioneer Memorial Obelisk. This is a great spot to relax, take pictures. Um, people are walking. It almost looks kind of like the Washington Monument area in Washington, D.C., except that this is an obelisk. And well, so is the one in Washington, D.C., I believe. But this is a lot smaller.
and you can walk to this area you can park and nearby there's plenty of parking and the zoo area so um if you decide to go to the zoo then um you can al always walk over here enjoy picnic things like that and then of course you have the zoo area right here So this is the, the entrance to the zoo in Houston. So you go through these gates and you get to see all of these animals. They do have many exotic animals in this zoo. It's one of the best zoos that I've been to. I definitely think it's a must see if you have children or you really love animals. There are bridges in this area too, like right here. So you can take a stroll and walk on these beautiful bridges going over this area right here, this body of water. For the size of the city, Houston does have so, so many trees. Um, and so I think it definitely that's a lot of beauty to the city. And, um, and that's a great thing. And the medical center is here nearby. One of the uh, greatest hospitals, the greatest hospital for cancer is here, MD Anderson Cancer Center. So we can take a look at just one building out of several of the MD Anderson Cancer Center. So many people from all over the world come here to get treated for cancer. Let's zoom out. Over there is, well, why don't we take a look? So over there is the Energy Stadium. So in this area is where you're going to have your Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. It's going to be in the Energy Stadium area. Uh, here's the Astrodome. Uh, in years past, when I have gone to the um, Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, they had concerts um, in the Astrodome. They had um, Cardi B. They had like really big... Uh, artists that come here. So it's not just any artists. I mean, these are big artists that come here to the Houston Livestock Show uh, area. The, the Houston Texans football team play here. And it's an NFL football team. And, um, and they train, I believe, in another area. Maybe that bubble over there. So again, this over here is downtown in the back. Museum District is marked with the pin. And then you have the Medical Center, the uh, Herman Park and Zoo area, where my cursor is located. All right, so why don't we go to Buffalo Bayou? So it is a park. So this area is the Buffalo Bayou area. You can see that there are bodies of water. There's a park here. You can go walk around. You can even get paddle boats um, to go to this area. So let's see what we can find. It's a nice view actually of downtown from Buffalo Bayou. You can definitely take a run go for a walk there's an area called the cistern which i had talked about earlier in the presentation and um i think that would be a great place for to visit so maybe the water looks a little bit low in this photo but um i think that there are certain areas that you can visit that will be to your liking a uh, great place to stroll 
um, great bridges. Um, this is probably taken during the winter time, uh, based on the foliage or the lack of there lack thereof. So um, probably during the spring, this all looks very nice, very green, very luscious, and um, and it, it does rain a lot in Houston. Probably in, in the spring, uh, it does rain a lot, so probably it's higher levels of water uh, in this area. But it stretches. It does stretch for quite some time. Um, and you can see that um, there are many places to walk and to run on the side. You can rent a, a paddle boats and, and uh, do tours along the way. So this is uh, the Buffalo Bayou area. So let's look at Cistern. Here, let's look for the Cistern. So over here is where you have that Cistern, that underwater, or under, I should say underground area where you have like these tunnels where they used to store water. That's definitely an interesting site. Uh, to see the uh, cistern. And here you can see a little bit of uh, downtown Houston. And people are visiting the cisterns. And they have like a light show, different uh, lights, and uh, I guess artists put their different lights and exhibits down there. That's a very interesting type of feature. I did include some photos of that in the presentation, but you can see that in relation to downtown Houston, pretty much everything is close to downtown. Um, downtown is right here, in Buffalo Bayou. We got the the cistern. We we, we talked about the uh, Herman Park area, the medical center, the museum district, the zoo. We talked about NASA, which is further down. Now let's go ahead and talk about another place that um, I would like to recommend, which would be, let's see if they have it on here. Seismic. So this is Highway 6 right here. So Se Seismic is on Highway 6 on the west side of Houston. So looking over here, you can see that we're really far away from the city of Houston proper. I believe downtown is like way over there. Maybe you can see it faintly with the cursor. Um, but we are now in West Houston. So Seismic is great. Um, it's in this plaza. It still says Bed Bath & Beyond because this is probably outdated when it comes to uh, VR, but it is in this building. I, I would have liked to go inside, inside this building to take a look to see what they have. I've been in there, but I want you to see it. But we can't, it seems, because this is still Bed, bed Bath & Beyond. So that's what it was before. But let me tell you, I highly recommend that you go to Seismic because that is something that you probably may not see anywhere else. It's a super interactive place, a place to take pictures. If you love Instagram, great place to take pictures. It's a picture spot. So it's, it's definitely a wonderful thing. All right, so I mentioned downtown is really far away and it is. Over here, we have the Toyota Center. That's where the Houston Rockets play. They also have many concerts. Um, there's also an aquarium around here. If you have children, you may want to visit this aquarium. There's a Ferris wheel. There's like a little park area with little, a few games and some other rides like a Ferris wheel. I mean, a Ferris wheel, a merry-go-round along with the Ferris wheel, like I mentioned. And this is a downtown aquarium. So let's see if we can get a glimpse of uh, the interior. This is the restaurant. And so while you're eating at the restaurant, at the aquarium, 
you can see fish and that's very beautiful. I think it's a little bit of a pricey restaurant, but hey, you, you, the environment is hard to beat. It gets very full. There are many different parking lots. Most of them are under here. Otherwise, you have to go park in a parking garage, which is a little further down. You have to walk quite a distance, actually, to go to the parking garage. But um, I've only had to do that once. And um, I don't, and that's very rare, I think, to have to go to the parking garage. So um, if you come early enough in the mornings, I suggest when you do things, you do them in the morning, you have less people, you, you can probably find parking underneath here. I don't think it'd be much of, a, of an issue. And this is just downtown area. Minute Maid Park is over here. This is where the uh, Houston Astros play. They also call it the juice box because Minute Maid is juice. And this is the, it has a retractable roof. So this is the juice box when the roof is uh, open. Houston Astros are very popular in the city, probably more popular than the Texans and the Rockets. Um, it's just really deep in the heart of the city to this team. Now, I want to talk about Galveston. We can take a little journey over there. Remember, this is the same route that we took to uh, get to I-45. We, we take I-45 all the way to NASA. On the way, you can actually see uh, the University of Houston. It'll be on the right side, the University of Houston. Here's part of the campus right here of the University of Houston. So yes, I mean, we can take this road I-45 for all, pretty much all the way to Galveston. But uh, I'll go ahead and uh, probably uh, go directly there using the search feature. But I just want you to kind of get a get an idea of really how big this city is. I mean, we're, we're going for quite some ways to get to Galveston and even to get to NASA. So why don't we go ahead and uh, search directly for Galveston? Keep in mind, Galveston is an island, too. So you're going to cross a big bridge when you get there. All right, so here's Houston up here. And here's Galveston down here. So there's one place I would like to show you. It's called Moody Gardens. If you have children, this is a great place. They even have a Schlitterbahn water park. Moody Gardens, they have a convention center, but they also have literally gardens and a rainforest pyramid. So um, it, they kind of make it look like it's a rainforest, very tropical. Um, it's great. I've been there twice, once for a convention for PAs. And another time uh, I went years and years ago, I think maybe it was in for a university trip. This one is an aquarium. This turquoise colored uh, pyramid is an aquarium and it looks like they do have penguins here. So if you wanna, and there they are, I see them swimming. If you wanna see penguins, you can see them right here. Another place you can also see penguins is in SeaWorld in San Antonio. And this is the rainforest that they that I mentioned. So it really does look like a rainforest, luscious, green, very humid as well. But 
you get to appreciate different types of fauna, flora and fauna. There's some bamboo right there. It's a nice walk. A great place to see nice plants that you probably can't see anywhere else in the state. And then they have smaller pyramids here. And you can take a walk. You can take a walk to these pyramids. It's really nice. Um, in this photo, it's a very nice day. Um, keep in mind that it does rain a lot in Houston and Galveston. I remember when I lived there, it rained at least three times a week. Um, not always hard and not always all throughout the city, but it did rain or drizzle at least three times out of the week. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. So there are many things to really do on the beach. As you know, there are water sports. You can go parasailing. You can go on jet skis. You can do all of the water stuff as you please in this city. Um, Galveston is uh, had a hurricane in the uh, in year 1900, I believe, and um, yeah, the the port of Galveston eventually ceded its authority, in a sense, to the port of Houston. But you still see, you still have great things in the city. You still have uh, great restaurants. You have here uh, Pleasure Pier, which you may have seen in the video uh, earlier. And they have rides, they have restaurants called Bubba Gump. Bubba Gump is where they kind of like reenact a lot of the sayings and acting of the movie Forrest Gump. And so um, it's a really good seafood restaurant. It's actually a chain. But you can get on rides and it looks beautiful at nighttime. I mean, just imagine seeing this at night. It's it's gorgeous. I'm trying to see if we can kind of get an image of uh, from the distance of what the pier actually looks like. It looks like you can get on these rocks and see how the pier looks from a distance and I and and it looks nice you know I, I'd like to see a night image but I think that's something you can see also for yourself if you find if you find yourself in Galveston at night uh, trust me it is very beautiful so I have a friend named Luke um, he actually went to uh, got his PhD at uh, UTMB the University of Texas medical branch uh, in Galveston. Um, actually, it's the first, UTMB was also the first medical school in the state. So, um, yeah, I would come to Galveston uh, pretty often because he lived here in Galveston. Now he, he lives in McAllen, but he, he did live in Galveston for years. So, Luke, if you're watching, um, I hope you're watching this. Uh, please subscribe, <laughs> like. Um, but yeah, you're a great friend. And so, um, you know, I, uh, we, sh we should hang out sometime. Anyway, so downtown is in this area as well. And um, you can get an appreciation for the fact that a lot of the homes look the same. They look old style, kind of reminds me of Louisiana. Yeah, so this is a really nice, really nice area. Weather's great. It's really breezy. And this is an area also, like, if you're going to go on a cruise, it's like a port where you can go on a cruise ship. So, um, it is a great place overall. And here's the bridge I was talking about. When you're crossing into um, Galveston, you're going to be crossing a really big bridge. And uh, so... All right. Now, I, I talked about uh, a restaurant called um, Pho Dien. It's on Bel Air Boulevard. If you go to Bel Air Boulevard, you're going to find it's more of like the Asian part of town. Actually, there's more than one Asian part of town, but the biggest part is on Bel Air Boulevard. And Pho Dien, 
which is in this plaza right here, is the best pho restaurant I've ever been to in all of Texas. Anywhere, actually. And you can see it's in this plaza, Pho Dien. Now, if you're looking, if you go to Pho Dien and you find out they're closed, maybe you want to eat pho like really late at night, there is a place for you. It's called Pho Ve Dem. So P-H-O-V-E-D-E-M. Pho Ve Dem. And they're open really late into the night, maybe like 2, maybe 3 a.m. But they open late too. They open at 5 p.m. So, um, yeah, if you really want to eat pho and it's late at night, maybe... I don't know, you had, went to a party or something and you want, you're want you craving pho, pho vedem is your spot. But this is my favorite, uh, pho dien. I really like pho dien. So we're going to zoom out just a little bit. So you can kind of see how big this city is. I mean, it's massive really really massive we can go on and on and on uh in fact uh houston is bigger than some states in the usa it's comparable to the size of connecticut maybe even bigger than connecticut so we're talking about a huge city very massive with um just a, a really big um music scene if you like hip-hop music there's a big music scene here uh for that um it's it's great i i think it's overall a very uh cosmopolitan city i should say very modern very very unique and um very beautiful and so i recommend that you do visit houston when you have the chance if you come to Texas, Houston is definitely a, a place you want to check out. And um, yeah, this has pretty much been the tour of, of in VR uh, of Houston, Texas. Now, next, I will go ahead and do um, Mexico City. So if you are interested in Mexico, I will go ahead and do a, do a tour of Mexico City. Uh, we will explore it together. We will see things and um, kind of take an appreciation for the major things of Mexico City. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's tour. If you have any questions or anything you want to make known, please send me an email. You can find it in the about section of my channel. And I will be glad to hear from you about anything, any request that you have. I will definitely um, go ahead and um, acknowledge them. Somebody had requested a city in Mexico. So I will go ahead and do Mexico City since it is the largest city in the, um, in the country of Mexico. So thanks again. This has been Earth Explore VR. And um, hope you have a great day or a great time wherever you are in the world.